talking Reds is John Gibbons and we're Paul Cope. You pointed out down the stairs for the first time. Off first the, time we've done it together. Our first appearance together. It, it feels it? like two grown ups. Do you think? <laughs> well, I'm not sure. <laughs> this could go anywhere. I've got no idea what's going to happen. I didn't know until we walked in that it was me and you. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. Well, we'll see. We'll, see. well I'll know. I've sort of got an agenda. So, part one, we're going to talk about transfers because obviously it's been an exciting 24 hours for Liverpool in terms of a big name coming in, a world record fee for a goalkeeper who is, uh, well, probably touched down in Liverpool by now. So, you're going to be talking about that and a couple of outs. Uh, in part two, we're going to be talking about the members' sale because I know that's our topic for a lot of you at the moment. A lot of you have asked us to talk about that, so we're going to be discussing that. And we've got a little sneak preview of our Kiev documentary, which is out today in the middle as well. So, packed agenda for talking Reds. But first of all, the good news, Alisson. It is a world record fee for the goalkeeper. He's massive. Um, he's on his way and bar any kind of last minute hitches which I know happened with Fakir but yep. bar any last minute hitches he'd be a Liverpool player yeah well it's funny isn't it because I was even thinking that yesterday because we're all getting carried away but literally the last big fella we tried to buy there was a last minute, <laughs> minute hitch where they were like oh he hasn't got any knees yeah like, oh yeah, yeah we don't want him then um, yeah I'm dead excited I am dead excited yeah. about it are you? Yeah, no, I'm really excited like, about even it. Even that thing you just said, then one of, one of my favorite things is he's massive. Yeah, like you can almost forget all all the stats and everyone's yeah. doing all. If you go through Twitter, there's loads of like his pass completion in the final third and all that. I'm like, I'm not that bothered. I'll be honest, he's yeah. massive <laughs> and he can catch. Yeah, <laughs> I was well, literally saying on a show a week ago that at this stage, I think we'd all just take a lad who can catch and kick a bit. And that's it. Like yeah. Nigel Martin. Yeah. I'd, I'd take Nigel Martin in his peak now. And instead, we're going out and buying a £70 million one, which is just. It is great. More, so, and really. I haven't seen loads of him. Like, I think a lot of us have I've seen him when he played against Liverpool, and he conceded quite a few, obviously, but that's because we're mustard. Yeah. And I saw him in the World Cup playing for Brazil, where he had a couple of issues and things, but, but was generally a little bit quiet. Didn't have many kind of saves to stop and things mm. like that. But speaking to James Horncastle earlier in the week with our. Um, for one of our specials that we did on our subscription service and he was just okay. like he's just, he was just saying like you know and he's not a Liverpool fan but he was like he might be weighing on Liverpool to win the title now because he's like you know it's not just an upgrade it's like it's an upgrade times of 100 yeah. isn't it but they, when you when they do the tour like player specials on yeah. transfers they're my favourites because as you say James Horncastle there's nothing in it for James no. Horncastle to say like we're just going to get carried away and say he's brilliant yeah. but there's nothing in it for him to say that and no. I'd actually done the whole well, we we scored seven past him. He can't be that good. Blah blah blah. Yeah, yeah. But listening to him, I I, got, I finished listening to that the other day with you on it, and was like, I can't wait now. <laughs> I can't wait to see this fella yeah. because, like, he was literally saying, yeah, he's basically player of the season yeah. in the whole league, yeah. including strikers and that. So look at it's it's just I think we're so desperate, aren't we, yeah. in this club to just have a goalie you can rely on again, a big fella. Do you know what I love about him as well? It's double saves. Yeah. The oh, double, he's straight up. The yeah. double saves are yeah. they They're yeah. my favourite goalie yeah. bits, I think. He's going to do something brilliant in the first month and everyone's going to go, ah, ah, everyone's yeah. going to be okay. Everyone's yeah. going to be okay. But, but the flip side of that is he's also going to do like a Cruyff turn, oh, yeah. 40 yards from goal. Yeah. Yeah. And there's, I, I reckon, I was thinking about this yesterday, the whole season ticket amnesty that's going to go on. I reckon the club should do an additional bit where they're like to loads of old fellas. It might be time, you know. <laughs> we're, we're bringing in this fella. He's gonna. Yeah, yeah. He has like he has take on stats. <laughs> there's too many. He's up there with Chamberlain. Yeah, like if my granddad was still alive now, he doesn't want to see a goalie with take on stats. Like he does. He's done 120 dribbles this year. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. It's both fair play. Um, he's, he, as I say, he's, I think he should be here by now. He was spotted at the airport. He, he had a little uh, chat with a couple of people. He said, now it's time for a new adventure, uh, which is quite exciting. And I think a lot of these players are seeing Liverpool as, as a place where adventures do happen. And that's a really good thing as well. Yeah, definitely. It's, it's funny that, like, how far we've come. And I, I was thinking about this yesterday. About, like, and I've, I've criticised FSG in the past. and I've had the moment of trying to be sort of balanced about it all, but I know there's still a, a, a section of the support out there who hate them and yeah, yeah. just think that they're rubbish and all that. But if you think about this, the same scenario a few years ago, as soon as we think Chelsea are involved, we're thinking, oh, we won't get him then. Chelsea will get him. It happened with Salah the first time, didn't yeah. they? It wasn't at this level, but whenever we were involved and Chelsea were involved or we were involved in City or anyone, we'd be like, oh, well, they'll beat us. And that just that just seems to have stopped because yeah. as soon as it like the the news broke that we'd agreed a fee and I could a few journalists were like saying that doesn't mean no one yeah, else can Chelsea agree a fee. Come in, yeah, but yeah. as soon as that happens, I think 
Yeah, but we've got our secret weapon there, haven't we? Because as soon as you get in a room with Klopp, yeah. there's no way you're leaving without thinking, yeah, I'm going to sign for these. Yeah. This is brilliant. Yeah. Like, what a, what a journey this is. Yeah. And we literally played in the Champions League final. And if you're Alisson watching that, you're thinking, did it win it? If I was in goal, yeah. and it's a fair shout. That's it, exactly that. <laughs> You just need me then, yeah. <laughs> I'd, love, I'd love it if he came out and said that after <laughs> As soon as he signed yeah. on. He's also cut his holiday short in Sardinia to come over, which I really like as well. It feels yeah. like they all do now. Like, I'm waiting for one to go. Do you know what? Just hang on. Because yeah. like, yeah. like, my bird to go mad, he's like... He's just played the full season for Roma where he's played every game. Yeah. And like you can't just go away for a week because they don't let you. And then he's gone to the World Cup for a month, you know, with all the training and stuff like that. Now he's come home and he's like, oh, oh, yeah, you know that week's holiday that you've been looking forward to for ages? I'm cutting it short <laughs> and we're moving to Liverpool. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, well, this is the I, don't, I, don't know, I know there's benefits to going out with a footballer as well but honestly my beard wouldn't have that she'd be like fuck off mate 100% <laughs> when, when we talk to, we do the pro view with Steve Warner yeah. and we, I love talking about stuff like this because yeah. it's too easy to forget yeah. those conversations yeah. and they might like all of this is going on there's definitely been a moment where he's think he puts the phone down to Roman or he's been in a meeting and then someone goes to him have you phoned your bed <laughs> and he goes yeah. oh no and yeah. it, he'll have, he'll go through the thing we all go through where someone goes do you want to go do you want to go on a trip to America for, to do the tour yeah. and you're like part of you's like yes of course I do and then there's that little bit where you're like yeah got to box this off at home now I've basically been saying all season don't worry the summer soon yeah. we'll do something We've nice we've got that week think yeah. about that week it's going to be great you love Sardinia <laughs> <laughs> and he's served it so fair play to him he is yeah, on his way over and he's, um, he's he will be a Liverpool player won't he can't, in, in the can't, short term. can't believe they're not live like doing a live stream of the medical I can't believe I was we haven't go. got to that point I was, yet I'm like because it's Inspire which is Master Hill um, you know it's not far I'm, I'm, one day I'm just going to I'm going to come into the morning meeting and say I'm just going to go up to Spire and just, just have a look and just go love you <laughs> <laughs> thanks so much for coming massive goalie <laughs> so yeah if you want to see that uh, comments in the, in the thing below and we'll, we'll try and make it happen um, just a couple of quick outs uh, the few rumours today as well about especially around forwards I mean there's too many of them isn't mm-hmm. there um, you know you're looking at it and there's this guy's playing half each at the moment and stuff and, you have, and we haven't even seen the first four next season if you count Shakiri as yeah. you think he's going to be you know fourth choice for the three spots if you like yeah. then so you know if you're thinking about storage Ojo Origi Ings mm. I mean there's just too many of them and so I've noticed today Origi's been linked with a loan move to Newcastle I saw Rafa saying yesterday basically he hasn't got any money I so sorry mean. about that and so, and so this seems to fit into there where he's looking at loans I don't know what, what you think about Origi, whether you'd be looking to cut your losses and for a permanent move for him. There is always the buyback clause, isn't there, which is, uh, which is the new the new air uh, fiddle. But uh, alone to Newcastle, I mean, it, it feels like it'd be quite a good move for him. Yeah, like I, I think any moves like that, I, I always thought things would end up there and, and Rafa would love him, but I think it makes sense. I, I didn't know whether it was permanent, but yeah, imagine being a Newcastle fan. But we've still got no money. What, why hasn't that changed yet? Yeah. Isn't it? It just gets a bit boring after yeah. a while. Doesn't yeah, it doesn't someone... matter how much that TV deal goes up. <laughs> Literally still. We're, and we've got fans going, yeah, but FSG are only spending all this money because of the TV deal. Newcastle fans must be like, aren't we getting any of it? <laughs> we must get some of the TV yeah. money. Yeah, um, yeah I, I, I don't know. I don't know about Origi. Like, my biggest issue, and I've said this on, on previous shows, is that if you've played for Liverpool in the first team, this is an old Gerrard thing, and you go anywhere else, whether that's back into the reserves or to another club, you have to be the best player. You have to be yeah. if you want to make it at Liverpool. And I was—I know there was people, and I part of me was still thinking this. I wonder if he comes back for pre-season training and he just goes, do you know what? I'm going to show you you don't need to buy someone. And that, in fairness to Klopp, that's the way he sort of behaves, isn't it? You'd have said to them all, well, save me 60 million quid. Yeah. I'm quite happy for you to bang a load in in pre-season and make me go, oh, God, yeah. Mm. And he, he hasn't. Yeah. And, and it, if I'm those players, any of them, including Solanke in this, and the, t- the teams you're playing against, you've got to be thinking, I've got to be scoring goals in this. I can't just contribute. I've got to score goals. Because look at Danny Sturridge. Strolls around for a bit, bends a couple into the bottom, bottom corner. And he's like, yeah. That's what I do. Yeah. And at least, it, I know most of us are like, well, I, I think it's too late for him and all that. But at least then you go, well, he's still got something. The likes of Origi, I, I think it's time to cut your losses. Because the other thing we've got going on at Liverpool now is when he joined, you're like, oh, yeah, you can see how he gets into the team. But since then, we've gone into the stratosphere. So now for him to get into the team, he's got to become one of the top 
strikers in the world yeah. to get there. And I just don't see how he does that now. He he could well go to somewhere like Newcastle and be all right and be a 15 goal a season striker in the league. But what do you think? I'd I'd be I'd be looking to do the buyback. Would you? Jigger. Just yeah, in case. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I think there is potentially a really good player in there and I think you know, it is easy to forget like just how instrumental he was in that in brilliant run to the Europa League final and yeah. the fact that he was he was starting in those games. But but he needs to play and he needs to iron out all his issues on someone else's time because like you say, at the moment if you want to be on our front line you've got to be one of the best players in the world. And he isn't um there's no point us waiting for you know, expanding with him for three months yeah. in the hope that he is. So, so yeah. he needs games. He needs to be playing. He needs to be playing Premier League. So, mm-hmm. I'd probably looking to sell him just to, you know, to, to bring some money in and and just be aware of the fact that it probably isn't going to work out. But if you've got that buyback clause, then if he does become the player that he he's threatened to a couple of times, then uh, you can always take him back. Even if you just sell him again, like Real Madrid do, make a few more money. I, I, well, I'd love us to start doing that. Yeah. I love it when sell him for fifteen, buy him back for thirty, yeah. and sell him for forty. Like, this is mad. Imagine being him. Imagine that phone call. Yeah. To your wife. <laughs> What's happening? I don't know. <laughs> I don't I'm know. going to Liverpool, but don't you worry about it. <laughs> I mean, it's a long weekend. <laughs> uh, okay, so yeah, we do transfer shows. We do three a week at the moment on Tour Play, which is our subscription audio service. Uh, we, we we chat in the room. We get journalists in, and or, or just obviously all new fans and just talk about all the latest. We round up all the details so you don't have to kind of trawl through it yourselves. And really popular shows. So yeah, so do good time to subscribe to Tour Play, and obviously. We've got the season on the horizon now and all these exciting pre-season games. The Anfield Wrap are going out to America. We fly out tomorrow. There's four of us going. We're going to be one of the largest media crews in the world at these games, which is really true and exciting. Uh, Four of us going because we want to capture every part of it, the sights, the sounds, and, and, and and all of what it's like to support Liverpool in America during this week. I know you guys over in the States are really excited. You've sold out the Ann Arbor game, over 100,000. It's going to be the biggest attendance that Liverpool have ever played in front of, which is going to be an amazing spectacle. So really excited for that. So we know you are excited, and we're going to come and tell the story of you guys as much as what Liverpool are doing out there as well. So hopefully some good interviews. Definitely three amazing live shows. And yeah, just, just covering it all. So we can't wait to get involved. Kiev was good, wasn't it? Kiev was boss, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was just before you got into that, I was just gonna say which four. Who, yeah. who were the Fab Four? Going? So it's me, Neil Atkinson, Gareth Roberts, and Craig Hannon. Oh, it's big hitters, that it isn't is, it? and it, it's versatile skills. Yeah. So uh, is that how did you? Is that how you did it? Did you do like skills comparisons and be basically like, like yeah, top trumps? Yeah, I mean tours are like they're really good fun, but they are like they are graft as well, and you've got to kind of be you know you. Good at a few things basically, yeah. so you know, you all know, rounders, yeah. endurance required. Yeah, yeah, you see, you're the main man for the tours, I think, aren't you? <laughs> you're like the lead singer for the live shows. Uh, you can come again, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, the, the live show is gonna be brilliant, but obviously, we're gonna get really good coverage as well. But, but I just wanted to briefly mention Kiev because we've been working on a documentary about our time on the bus, but also you know, the stuff in Shevchenko Park and, and all around the game, which people are still kind of buzzing off. And so, that's gonna be going out today. Is a quick taster of what you can expect. There's been lots of discussion since, hasn't there, about sort of, you know, the way Liverpool fans behave and what they're about and their culture. And I don't just mean from us amongst ourselves, I mean from like, you know, fans of other clubs. And there's been a lot of sort of piss taken and all that sort of stuff. But for me, what that afternoon showed is that we are different and we have got a passionate culture around the club. And, you know, the amount of flags there, the amount of banners there, the pyro there, how much people enjoyed themselves on the day. I'm not having it that 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 that, that happens at any other club really. It might happen at some other clubs, but not all of them. Not all of them have got that type of fan culture that we've got. And we should be allowed, and we are allowed, and we're doing it with this video, to celebrate our fan culture. Definitely. That's one of the things I kept saying was, oh, imagine, imagine or seeing, was uh, imagine getting a bus the whole way to Kiev and then seeing your team get beat. And it's like, don't feel sorry for us, lad, because we had the best time ever. And time. like the whole experience around the match, and, and, and in particular on, on that day in Shevchenko Park, something that will live with me for the rest of my life. So anyone feeling sorry for Liverpool fans that travelled all that way and spent thousands Thousands, hundreds, and thousands of pounds to get to uh, to get to there to see their team get beat. Don't feel sorry for them because it was it honestly was an absolute joy to be there. Yeah, so that's three minutes of our documentary about Kiev. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope that whetted your appetite for more. The whole thing's going to be on YouTube. Uh, it'll be out today, as we say. So we're really pleased for a huge thanks to Culture 
City TV for coming along and filming it and also putting that together. They came along at very short notice. It was less than 24 hours, so hats off to Joe for, for, for everything, really. What a phone call that was. I, I, chatted, <laughs> I chatted to Joe when you got back. I was like, yeah. that must have been a mad 24 hours. He was like, yeah, it was, yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. he wasn't funny. even going, was he? No, no, at he all. wasn't going at all. No, no. And, and then ended up on your bus. Yeah, and we got him and managed to get him a ticket and, and stuff like that. And he just, he just absolutely loved it, uh, apart from the fact that Gareth's just awful with him. Like, he's just dead mean to <laughs> <laughs> and so And so there was a lot of that. But, that feels uh, like an entire different show. We could do another half an hour on that. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure Gareth, Gareth will probably do that one day on Talking Reds. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about the member sale anyway, because that's something that you guys have been talking about a lot. There's been issues with it again this morning. And it feels like this is an annual thing. Peter Moore's had to apologise on Twitter, which is never a great look. Um, it's not great, is it? I, I, there's two words that, that I've highlighted here from Peter Moore's apology where he's put unprecedented traffic. And I just think, you know how many members there are because you sell them the memberships. Yeah. You know that a lot of people are going to be accessing it because you've set it up in that way. Yeah. And they just need to deal with it better and they just need to find a way to deal with it better and if it's hard then sorry that's your job yeah um, I said on a on a show last week or this week about apologies generally I'm I'm not a big fan of apologies public apologies especially when they just they're just meaningless like the, the thing of an apology for me is stop making the same mistake I'd rather you didn't apologise and just stop doing it <laughs> and things like this I said it when, when I was looking at going through Twitter this morning people's comments because we're lucky we're season ticket holders so we're not actually involved in the chaos we yeah. just watch it from afar and have sympathy for the people who are involved in it and I was, I was saying to John before like it's ridiculous that this is something they do as a it comes back to the whole customer versus supporter thing if if we're customers of this massive organisation it's not that hard to predict how many people are going to hit your servers when you're selling tickets mm. it's not that hard you can do we were talking about this you can do how many members are there how many computers are they each likely to use? Because th- this is something else I think the club just sort of is blind to, yeah, yeah, yeah. is that if you set it up in this way, yeah. everyone's going to have four computers on the go. Well, it's like a busy bar, out. everyone starts doubling up, don't they? Of course. Yeah. And, that, and like, even, like, it's a great comparison, isn't yeah. it? Because like, when it's really busy, three of your mates go at the same time yeah, yeah. and spread out down the bar <laughs> and see who gets there first. But if everyone's doing that, there's three times as many yeah. people at the bar. But they should. it's not that hard to account for. Like... Even from a technical perspective, you run an online business. I've had an online business. There's all kinds of things you can do to say, well, we can just use cloud servers and scale up. And I mean, I'm sure there's people out there who've got far more technical knowledge of this than me, but I just don't think it's good enough. And for, for them to just come out and say, yeah, we're sorry, but... Like, that. well, there shouldn't be a but. There yeah. shouldn't be. It's unprecedented. Why is it? Yeah. Why is it unprecedented? Do you, is it a surprise that Liverpool fans are desperate for tickets now? when we've just been to a Champions League final, we're about to buy this fella we're talking about. I've literally this week had three messages already from people who I don't know that well asking me for tickets. Yeah, yeah. I know. Can I you sort me for tickets yeah, yeah. for... And I'm like, well, I'm getting that already. Well, yeah. but that's... It's, and I'm, my reply to them is, I can ask around, mate, but you've got to bear in mind that everyone wants tickets now. Like, it was popular enough before we got to a Champions League final and everyone saw the fun and all that and Shevchenko Park and the stuff that's on that video. Of course, of course, there's going to be a huge level of demand. So, yeah, they just need to sort it out and stop apologising. Yeah, and it's it's going to annoy people and it, and it gets people's backs up. And you know, it's I feel as I say, my sympathies and members. You know, I'm just ticking a box every year and saying yes to everything and, and kind yeah. of getting them. And members, the way they've set it up was, I mean, they're trying to be fair and it's an issue and. I understand that there's no one way of doing it, which everyone's going to go, do you know what, that's great. Yeah, because absolutely. new people, people with loyalty think they should be rewarded. People who haven't got a loyalty say, well, how do you get on the ladder? If, yeah. if you haven't I've moved to Liverpool, I want to start going the game. You say yeah. it's impossible for me to do that. But this, but the problem is that they've created a situation now where there's a lot of hoops you've got to jump through and, and they're not particularly enjoyable hoops. So, I mean, my mates were all locked down earlier in the week and to try and get tickets for the first half of the season and it was graft and, and, and things and you know and they had to pretend you were working when they were when you were on the screens and this is presuming that people are, can do that if you you know if you're in an office it's it's one thing if yeah. you work in a warehouse then then you got you're taking the morning off aren't you yeah. and so so they're in the situation but most of them managed to get sorted I know Neil Dockham for one was was really annoyed he wants to go in the cop and end up having to buy more expensive tickets because they they'd run out in, in areas of the stadium where he didn't want to sit in so you know you're paying you're paying more for the service you kind of don't want 
one, but at least he's yeah. in. But I said, well, at least he's sorted now till till Christmas. At least that's it. Yeah. And he said, oh no, they've held back these two games for a free for all. So we could only actually buy category A and B with priority. They decided that category C games there's no priority for them whatsoever. So. And I understand why they've done it, but they've created a situation where today, so people who are still a bit annoyed at the club have had to lock back on today with everyone. And funnily enough, there was an unprecedented demand because it's absolutely because <laughs> it's because it's complete free for all for yeah. these two tickets. So I don't know; it's not great. Uh, I mean, the biggest stadium in Liverpool, hundred percent. Like, it, <laughs> but it, look, look, there's loads, there's loads on this as well. We were just chatting about this upstairs. The it depends how you look at it, doesn't it? If you look yeah. at it from our point of view as, as supporters then, yeah, just build a bigger stadium and then everyone who wants tickets can have tickets. If you look at it from a business perspective and you're cold about it, the best businesses to have are the ones that have demand outstripping supply. It's as simple as that. Yeah. There's a reason Apple sell out of iPhones when they've released a new iPhone because they create this demand mm. that means people will pay more for it. People will queue up outside shops. It creates this whole thing about it. And being cynical, I would think hedge fund owners of a football club, why would you want to get rid of that? Why would you want to get rid of this dynamic you've got, which is almost perfect. Like all of this, it's what it's one of the reasons all of the family stuff on the advertising campaigns really annoys me. Just decide, decide. If it's a family, if I'm having a family party, everyone can come. Yeah, I'm not saying to people you have to wait outside because you didn't you didn't apply quick enough. It's not a family. That's just not. It's just not what it is. It annoys me every time I see those those adverts. It's a business, and fine. We accept. Lots of us will accept it's a business now. But I've said this before: treat it, treat it like it's a business. Then, treat us like customers of Apple or Amazon, which are sound. Like yeah. I like shopping in those places. <laughs> um, but I think it's it's worthwhile saying as well what you just said, which is because I know Tony Barrick had loads of stick about this, and you're like, I, I feel so sorry for Tony in times like this. It isn't for for the for the club for the people in the club who have to deal with it. They're in an impossible situation. They're trying to find out a structure that keeps most people happy and is still fair when the reality is it's impossible. Like, it's an impossible job. You'll never keep everyone happy until you've got a stadium big enough. But if, if they're bosses, it's like working for any company, isn't it? If the owners are saying, well, we're not building a bigger stadium, for now anyway, yeah. maybe in the future, you're just going to have to deal with it. We're, we're always going to get this. So yeah. that's it comes back full circle to the like, the servers that's the bit where where I'm like I've got no sympathy on that side because you can just sort that out just get that right that's the bit you you can control forget the rest so I reckon if Adam Media sends that stadium design to Peter Moore 10 more times it'll definitely happen but that's just <laughs> <laughs> should reckon, should, we should add up I'd love to do get, get Peter Moore on an interview and just ask him how many well, times ha- have you seen how, how many times has he seen it and what does he think of it like does it does he is Adam Media's name in his head <laughs> Does he when he tweets? Does he think oh, that lad Amelia is going to send me a picture of the stadium? <laughs> or is he enjoying it? Or does he like play? it? Yeah, well in, well in. If, you, if you watch it, Peter, let us know. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Like, like for uh, Adam Amelia does lay out. We, we tweet first. You know what? It's quite funny. Uh, we all think it's quite funny. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed talking about today. Hope you've covered everything you want us to do. Loads more on tour player, especially if we got round Allison. And yeah, really looking forward to this American tour. So make sure you're following us on all our social media accounts: Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and Snapchat. If you want to see what we get up to out there it will be a lot uh, but in the meantime thanks to Paul for coming in and that's been Talking Meds